This video is going to save you money. I went to our Facebook group called Garden Fundamentals. It has the same name as this YouTube channel. And I asked everyone to identify a useless garden gadget. I got a whole list of them. And from those, I picked 10 of the best ones. These are products you should not buy. If you're not part of our Facebook group, come on over and join. It's a group of passionate gardeners. We'll answer your questions and make sure that the answers are scientifically sound. Here's the list of 10 gadgets in no particular order. Useless gadget number one, spiked aeration shoes. This is one of the dumbest things that has ever been invented. If your foot gets stuck while you're using these, there's a good chance you're going to break an ankle. But even worse than that, these shoes don't work. What you have is a spike that pushes into the soil. Pushes. That means it's compacting the soil. You do end up with these holes, but the soil around the holes has been completely compacted. Spikes don't work for aeration. If you want to aerate your lawn, you need to take a core out of the hole. Aeration works, but do it properly with a core aeration tool. Here are some DIY spike shoes. They're an even dumber idea. Number two, the bulb planter. Now, some of these products are better than others, and the good quality ones do work to some extent. But the ones that you see around in home hardware stores, those things are a piece of garbage. You use them a couple times, and they bend, and they're done. Besides, they don't work all that well. When you see these used in the advertisements, they're working in really nice, loose soil, like a pile of peat moss. Take these out to a real garden that has clay or rocks. Sandy soil even is hard to use. They just don't work well. If you want a much better way to learn how to plant spring bulbs, have a look at this video. When I divide spring bulbs, I divide them into two classes. The small bulbs, I plant those with a trowel. It's much easier. The larger bulbs need to go deeper than these planters will go. And for that, I use a shovel. But have a look at the video, It'll give you a full detail on how to do that. Here's a good way to use your bulb planters. Number three, garden claw gloves. The first time I seen these, I just laughed. I thought this was an April Fool's joke, but it's not. They were actually being sold, and today I went online and looked, and everybody's selling these stupid gloves. Now, they might be a little better for digging in soil, but, you know, we have trowels and rakes and shovels to do that. You don't use your gloves for that. For everything else you want to do in the garden, these things are useless, and I think they're dangerous. I'd hate to scratch my eye with one of these on. Claws like this are useful for a cat, but not a gardener. Number four, the moisture meter. Now, watering is critical, and people like to buy tools to help them with that. Now, this tool isn't totally useless, but it isn't a tool a gardener should be using, and it's certainly not one you need. If you've never had one of these, you probably don't realize that they don't actually tell you when to water. All they do is give you a number. Then you have to take that number and look up a list and try and find your plant to see what the number means for that specific plant. And guess what? Most plants aren't on that list. The other problem with these moisture meters is that they're not very accurate. The readings you get depend a lot on the type of soil you have. And since we all have different soil, we all get different readings with the same moisture level. So you have to learn to adjust the meter to the soil you have. Well, there's a much easier solution for that. If you've been thinking about getting a moisture meter, have a look at this video where I compare the pros and cons of these meters. Number five, cheap pruners, or as some people like to say, secateurs. These are things for pruning woody plants. You can go to the dollar store and buy some really cheap tools, and you get what you pay for. They're almost useless. Now, good pruners are not a useless tool. That's a tool that every gardener should have, but buy yourself a really good one. I've been using my Felco for over 10 years, and it's still working. These are expensive tools, but it's really worth the money. Those cheap pruners, they need to be sharpened all the time. So you spend your time in the workshop with a file instead of out in the garden. For some reason, many of the good ones have red handles. But a red handle doesn't mean it's a good tool. You have to research the brand. 
Unfortunately, red is not a very good color for tools. They get lost in the garden. But here's an even dumber design for pruners. This thing's going to get lost in the garden right away. Who dreams up this stuff? Number six, sonic mold chaser. Now these are devices that you stick in the ground and they create sonic waves. And the claim is that these sonic waves are hated by moles and rodents and they just leave the area. Here's one ad for one of these devices and this one is so good. It repels cats, snakes, wild pigs, dogs, rabbits, rodents. This device gets rid of almost all the animals in your garden. But guess what? They don't work. The science on this is quite clear. Sonic devices don't repel any of these animals. By the way, there are also sonic devices to repel mosquitoes and they don't work either. I reviewed several different electronic devices to repel mosquitoes in this blog right here. Bottom line, sonic devices are a complete waste of money. Number seven, dog rocks. The first time I heard someone mention these, I thought it was a joke. But no, this is a serious product and it seems to be very popular. It's sold everywhere. So what is it? Well, these are special rocks that come from New Zealand and you place them in the dog's water dish. Then magic happens. When the dog drinks this water, he still urinates on your lawn, but that urine doesn't damage the lawn. Imagine that. The rocks reduces the amount of ammonia in the dog's urine. Now, I've reviewed these rocks extensively, and there's no science to support them. Now, I wrote a blog about this a while ago, and it's interesting that about half the people write in and say, yeah, these things can't possibly work. I've tried them. They don't work. And then the other half of the comments are from people who've tried them, and they found they work just great. Now, there's two problems with these comments. One is that once you've bought a product, most people will think it works even when it doesn't. You don't want to admit you bought a faulty product. The second thing that happens is that by using the rocks, you pay more attention to the water you give your dogs. If they drink more, their urine is more diluted. It has lower levels of nitrogen, and it damages the lawn less. So maybe they do work in that area. Don't buy these rocks. If you really want to try them, just find a rock in the garden and put that in your water dish. There's no magic in these special expensive rocks. I did find some dog rocks online that might be worth buying. At least these ones work. Number eight, water purifying magnets. Now these are sold mostly for your home, but these are also sold in gardening magazines and garden centers. What this is, is a small magnet and you place it around your water pipes. That magnet has magical properties that affect the water going through the pipe. There are a number of claims for these. Some ads say that they purify the water, or whatever that means. Some say it softens the water. I mean, we know hard water is not great for plants, so softened water would be better. Many of these products use a general term like enhancer. They enhance the water. Who the heck knows what that means? One website I looked at actually had a whole page of mathematical calculations about how it reorientates the molecules in the water. These products use all kinds of scientific mumbo-jumbo to convince you that they work. Bottom line, they don't work. There are scientific studies out there that have looked at these magnets, and they all reach the same conclusion. They simply don't work. Don't buy this product either for the garden or for your home. Number nine. This is one of my favorite ones. The sunlight calculator. So this is an electronic device you put in your garden at one spot, and it measures the amount of light it gets throughout a 24-hour period. And then it gives you a result as to whether or not this is a sunny spot or a shady spot. I wrote about this device a couple years ago. And I thought it was a pretty useless device. But I got a lot of comments that were pretty angry with. These are from people who bought the device, have used it, and think it's great. Quite a few of those people said, look, I don't have time to go in the garden and look up in the sky and see if a spot is sunny. They're too busy, so they use electronic devices to do that for them. Now, I think that's a silly argument. 
if you don't have the time to go in your garden, even for a few minutes to see if it's sunny, why are you gardening? These devices do work. They will measure the light and they give you a number as to how much light that spot got. But remember, you have to take it and put it in all the various spots you have in the garden. And light changes throughout the seasons for many of us. So you have to do it at different times of the year. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of plastic that you don't need. There's a very simple way to make a sun map, and it takes almost no time at all. And I've explained how to do that in this video right here. The other thing to understand is that plants aren't that fussy. They can take full sun, 90% sun, 80% sun, 50% sun. I mean, most sun-loving plants will grow just fine in part shade. Most shady plants will grow just fine in part shade. The other thing you'll notice that when you go plant shopping, those labels rarely tell you how much light they need, except in a very general sense. You know, we call them sun-loving, shade-loving. Maybe once in a while you'll see a label that says part shade, and that's it. Using an electronic device to get better accuracy doesn't do you any good if you don't know that accuracy for the plants you're buying. Number 10, self-watering pots. Now, some self-watering pots work quite well. These are ones with wicks in the bottom of the pot, the wick goes down into a water reservoir that sits below the pot and slowly sucks up some water to water your plants. Those make sense. But here's a new type of pot that is completely useless. Here you have a terracotta pot without holes in the bottom. And it sits in a reservoir. And you can see the water line is about halfway up the pot. The water seeps in the terracotta and waters your plant. Periodically, you come and add more water to the reservoir. These pots don't make any sense. The soil in them is going to be very wet. Half the soil is sitting below the water level. It's going to be saturated. The advertisements show this aloe vera, and it likes to dry out. And in fact, most plants we grow, they like to be watered, and then they like to dry out to some extent. These self-watering pots won't allow that. What will happen with this glass cylinder? It looks so nice and clean in the ads, but you know what happens. Algae will grow all over it. When you fertilize your plants, that water in there is full of nutrients. Bacteria will grow like crazy. That water in the reservoir will become gungy really quickly, and you're going to have to clean this once a week. And my third problem with these pots is they're expensive pots. I've seen one advertised for over $100 Canadian. Who the heck would pay that kind of money for a pot? I guess lots of people because it's still for sale on Amazon. I have one more useless product to tell you about, and that's Epsom salts. I know you've seen it all over the internet. Everybody tells you you need it, but you don't. Almost no gardener should be using Epsom salts. And to find out why, have a look at this video right here.